Greetings and thank you for joining us for the Pastor Mike Drop Podcast. My name is Mike Householder. I am a pastor here at Lutheran Church of Hope. And I'm joined as always by my faithful co-host, Emily Langpaul, Executive Minister of Youth and Family Ministries. Hello, Emily. Hello. How are you? Honestly, <laughs> yep. I mean, fine. Yeah. Uh, absolutely fine. But if I'm going to be really honest, and that's important, I think, in this mm-hmm. podcast, is we try to have very honest conversations about these things, faith, life, mm-hmm. the places where Christ and culture intersect. I'm tired of this. Yeah. I'm getting tired of the same old, same old. I, I want to be around people again and mm-hmm. go into public spaces. I want to watch a baseball game, and I want to I, I be able to go into a crowd and not think about all these other things. And I, I hate wearing masks. Yeah. I mean, it's so, they're so warm. They're so, yes. you're, just, you're just breathing your own air. And yes. It's, it's, how about you? I, well, <laughs> well, I feel similarly. I think uh, honesty is the best policy and that is. that is honest. I it think is. that's how a lot of us feel right now. But God is good. He'll get us through. How are your kids? Are they missing school? Are they missing Sunday school? Yeah. You know, hope kids, all that? Yes, they're missing all of it. They're doing surprisingly well, I think, uh, better than we expected <laughs> as we're all locked inside our house. Um, but yeah, they miss those things. And they ask every few days, like, when are we going to get to go back? And it's hard not having an answer. Yeah. So true for all of us. Well, one of the things we've been saying consistently all along is how important it is to be honest about what we're feeling and mm-hmm. not... Not pretend, oh, well, it's okay. Because that, when you suppress those feelings, first of all, God already knows. And mm-hmm. he's like, oh, you're just trying to fool me or yourself. That's not good for anybody. Mm-hmm. And secondly, if we are honest about it, it can really um, help. It That truth leads to freedom and new life. Yeah. Uh, but we were talking about school. Yeah. And so on that note, let's meet our guests for today. I'm so excited to have you three here. You lead massive... Uh, schools and ministries for lots and lots and lots and lots of students. Mm -hmm. And in this season of uncertainty, there's a lot of changes that come with that. So Emily, would you please introduce our guests? Yes, we have Dave Maxwell, who is the principal of Valley High School here in West Des Moines. Hi, Dave. Hey, Dave. Hi, guys. Welcome. And then we have Corey Dahlquist and Justin Stofa, who lead our Power Life ministry here at Hope for uh, junior high students. That's fantastic. So, Dave, you are the principal at Valley High School. Valley is what, either the first or second biggest high school in the state? Is it the biggest still? We're right up there, uh, one or two. Right. It, it kind of fluctuates between a few schools, depending on the enrollment, but we're always right up there at the, towards the top. Regardless, that's a lot, a lot of students, a lot of high school students, and mm-hmm. the responsibility falls on you. Uh, how did you get into this position once upon a time? Well, I always knew uh, I wanted to be an educator. Um, you know, I, I was a teacher for eight years. Uh, then I served as a dean of students at Hoover High School, and I'm just completing my 15th year here in West Des Moines at Valley. And uh, for 13 of those years, I was an associate principal, and I'm just finishing my second year as the principal. Wow. And in addition to all that, in addition to being husband and father and uh, we love your family. We love you too, mm-hmm. but we also love your family. Uh, Dave uh, volunteers in our youth and family ministries yeah. uh, here at Hope and also as a really ridiculously good bass guitar player uh, in our worship mm-hmm. band. So thanks, Dave. Uh, yeah. You're too nice, Pastor Mike. Thank for, you. For being. I have personally learned a lot from Dave. He's walked with us through yeah. quite a few things with a power life in particular mm-hmm. um, for many years, um, and he's just a tremendous uh, resource for us. So we're thankful for him. See, this is what I'm talking about. I already feel better. You know yeah. how you asked me before how I'm doing? Yeah. Wasn't doing good. I already feel better just, just being around Dave. Yeah. Uh, and oh and that's God. just one. And now we get to be around Corey and Justin. Too. Yes. Corey and Justin, yeah. speaking of leading big groups of kids, uh, Lutheran Church of Hope's confirmation ministry here at Hope called Power Life. And Emily, uh, you are their boss. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it really falls on you too. Uh, that's got to be one of the biggest confirmation ministries in the world for, for a Lutheran church. My confirmation class had 12 students in it. And, and what is our confirmation class this year, do you think, with, with, uh, throughout Hope? Uh, across all campuses, uh, we're well over 600, close to 700 students, just eighth graders, uh, who are getting confirmed this year. Six to 700 mm-hmm. eighth graders are getting confirmed. That's, that's just one year. No wonder we're all so tired, right? <laughs> uh, think about it. But, but Justin and Corey, you guys lead that ministry. How did you, what, where, how did you move into those roles? How does somebody become uh, a, a junior high 
confirmation ministry leader? Yeah, um, I'll go first. I uh, I started coming to Hope in 2006, and my wife Brenna had invited me, and so we loved coming to Hope. And it wasn't too long before we just felt really drawn to get a volunteer. And then, uh, as you know, in 2012, we joined the staff as the connections coordinator, and I love doing that. And then in 2014, a couple years later, uh, the Power Life role became open. Uh, the person that was there was moving on. Um, and I didn't really think too much about it, but then Emily called me and she's like, hey, I think you'd be great at this. Uh, and I was like, oh, you know, I never really thought about it, but I put some time to think about it. I prayed through it uh, and it just, I realized, yeah, I think that this would be a lot of fun. And what's been so awesome is it's been even more of a blessing than I could have ever imagined. Um, seeing students and getting to connect with leaders, it's been awesome. So I, this was my sixth school year. Uh, doing that, and it's it's gotten better, especially once uh, Corey joined the team. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so tell tell us your side, Corey too. Yeah, well, I um, I started going to Okaboji Lutheran Bible Camp. My family grew up attending that camp. Yes. And then through working there, I got to meet a lot of the Hope staff. They would come through as um, guest speakers, and a lot of families that went to Hope um, came to our camp as well. And then um, when I finished working at camp, I decided for one of my free summers in college that I would love nothing more than to be an intern at Hope if they would have me. And then I got to be a Revive intern, which was amazing for a summer. And then after that, I went um, back to school to finish my senior year of college. And then during that, I stayed in touch with a lot of the staff at Hope. And I knew like that was my dream job. Like that's what I wanted was to get back, get back to Hope somehow. And thankfully, then a job opened up to uh, join the Power Life team. And I loved it. Like I jumped on that opportunity as fast as I could. We are so glad you guys are here. Yeah. A good call, by the way, Emily, <laughs> hiring these two. I remember you know, both I, of those I, uh, phone calls. Yeah. They were good ones. I mean, there, there are certain times, you know, when you bring people into the staff, and this is a compliment to the two of you, that I can barely remember what it was like before you guys were mm. here because you've just taken it to a whole different level. So thank you for your faithfulness and your leadership. And I... I live in this community, Dave, so I know I hear the same thing from Valley High School families mm -hmm. uh, it, that just love your leadership. So we want to learn from you guys today. We want to tap into the things that you're seeing, but also the leadership challenges that are before you. And with that, we're going to dive into the two-minute drill. Yes, Here we go. let's do it. Two-minute drill. Two-minute drill. Okay, first question to all of you is what is it like to lead a school or ministry for thousands of students through a pandemic? Uh, Dave, let's start with you. Oh, man. Uh, first of all, just you know how unfortunate this is, um, trying to make sure that everybody stays safe, um, you know, not allowing people to come into the building, making sure that those who do come in have PPE on, mm. um, also trying to think about as a school system, you know, what's the best way that we can help our students continue learning. So that's probably been the biggest challenge is making sure that we're keeping kids engaged in the learning while we're away from school. Mm -hmm. So what has everything moved online for, for Valley High School students then during this time? Yes. And, and are they still in the process of doing that or is that wrapping up now this time of year? I believe uh, all families should have access to a Chromebook, um, and I know that we actually uh, delivered some hotspots also to families who may not have had internet access. So uh, at this point, everybody uh, should have access to the internet with a device. Wow. Gotcha. Gotcha. How about, well, go ahead. Yeah, Corey and Justin, what is it like to lead a ministry for thousands of students? Yeah, a lot like Dave said, it's, it has its challenges for sure, trying to keep students engaged in um, continuing to invest in their faith and uh, really to turn to that and yeah, invest their time in that during a time of a crisis or uncertainty. A lot of people um, tend to lean on their faith more, so try to engage them through online ways like YouTube and Zoom chats with their group and things like that. Yeah, those. Yeah. go ahead, Justin, please. I was just going to say it's uh, power life is always a bit of a whirlwind. And Dave knows this. Uh, he volunteers to help monitor the hallways, uh, which is like having a five-star general uh, in the building <laughs> on Wednesday nights. Yeah. Uh, 
And so at any, you know, at the, at the peak, there's probably 1,200 students all in the building all at the same time. And so when you lose that, there's a certain energy that gets lost. Mm-hmm. Um, but what's been so great, and I was saying this to, to Corey earlier, it's like we've become YouTubers. So <laughs> we've, moved, we've moved everything online. And fortunately, we had some of that infrastructure in place. Uh, and we said, we're going to stay the same time, same place, Wednesdays at 7. Um, and surprisingly, hundreds and hundreds of students have continued to show up uh, to tune in um, because there's something about that community, about showing up to the same time and place, even though we're there virtually, um, that there's still that energy and excitement. And as Corey said, we're not just putting on a a 30-minute YouTube show. We're pointing people to Jesus, uh, and that's always important. And we've realized that in the midst of the pandemic, it's even more, uh, students are even more aware of their need for something more than just what they can find in the world. So uh, it's been challenging, but also rewarding in that way too. That's great. I'm going to put a plug in for the Power Life Ministry on YouTube. Uh, it, you have your own YouTube channel. You can look that up, uh, Power Life. Uh, and if you can't find it there, you can always find the Lutheran Church of Hope YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. Once you go there, all the other channels within Hope are listed, and you'll see the Power Life logo, and you can just click there. This isn't just for Hope Kids either. Uh, and Hope Families. We have a lot of people listening to this podcast all over the world. Mm-hmm. And so if you have junior high age kids, or for those of you who watch from Europe and you don't know quite what junior high means in Europe, uh, age 12 to about 15 is what we're looking at here, uh, give or take a little bit. Uh, these are excellent resources. You'll see Justin and Corey, mm-hmm. you'll see others doing teaching, Bible lessons, uh, uh, the kinds of things that we'd be doing in person Mm -hmm. are now all moved online, and they're really excellent, uh, really wonderful tools and resources. Uh, So there's, as a pastor, I'm going to say this because I care about the spiritual well-being of families and young people. There's no excuse for just losing track of that uh, Mm -hmm. along the way. It's easy, it's accessible, it's free. Uh, it's available to the whole world, mm-hmm. uh, not just the students who are in our program. So, and and it's specifically done for uh, students who are of that age group, yeah. right, from about twelve to fifteen. So, it, it, you're 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 really good at communicating and targeting those things. So, yeah. just wanted to put that plug in, and good. let's move back into our two to four minute drill. Yeah. <laughs> well, second question: What would you be doing this month if COVID nineteen never happened? Oh, wow. Let's go the other side this time. Let's start with uh, Justin and work our way around that way. What would you be doing in the month of May, with, especially with Power Life? Yeah. So historically, Confirmation is the first uh, Sunday in May. That's our tradition at Hope. And so normally we're already done with the, the school year, if you will, and we're busy planning for summer and, and already starting to look ahead to what we want to do in the upcoming school year. So normally uh, we would be celebrating the past school year and already busy making our plans for how can we do it all over again. Yeah. Yeah, and Corey, that's a big that's a big undertaking. What is Confirmation Sunday like usually around here? Corey, can you describe that? Oh, it's so much fun. We get all of our eighth grade um, groups and leaders and students all together. And during our, we assign them to a Sunday service during the weekend. And during that service, we bring them up on stage. We acknowledge them. We give them a cross and we all pray for them as a hope family. And it's just this wonderful celebration. Like typically it has been in the past where we're all together and get to celebrate these students. And you've got faith statements leading up to that too, right? You guys, the yes. Corey, what, yeah. those happen or Justin the weeks before. Go ahead. Yeah, each uh, each year we ask students, uh, you know, from Scripture, Romans ten nine and ten says, if you profess uh, with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you'll be saved. And so uh, there's two parts of that. One is professing your faith, and the other is what you believe in your heart. And so we want to give students that opportunity to do that first part, to say, this is what I believe. So over the course of that three years of taking Power Life and going through confirmation, they're learning the Bible. They're asking questions. It's not just what does mom and dad think or what does my grandma think about Jesus or scripture, but we encourage them, what do you really believe? And no one's going to live this faith out for you. So uh, we encourage them to do that. Um, And then they get to write that out and read it to their family and friends it's just really holy night. So yeah. uh, they do that leading up to confirmation. People who grew up in other faith traditions may not understand what confirmation means. So I'm going to give just a nutshell uh, summary of it. 
you guys already just teed that up perfectly. Confirmation is confirming the faith you were baptized into once upon a time. It's you saying yes to Jesus, just as Jesus said yes to you in the waters of baptism. So it is a big deal. I mean, it is, it is that place in the faith journey for a lot of students where they say, this is what I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's what we'd be doing in May. That would be a big part of just the life of this whole church, not just our students, uh, because confirmation is something we all celebrate together. Yeah. And that's kind of sad. Speaking of celebrations for a whole community, Dave, uh, what would be going on at Valley High School in the month of May? I mean, a lot, I know, <laughs> but it kind of the culmination of a, of a big school year. What, what specifically would be happening? There's a lot going on in May, uh, especially for seniors. A lot of them would be taking AP tests. Um, of course, open houses would be uh, uh, taking place. Uh, the spring sports seasons would be um, continuing along, uh, getting ready for any kind of state tournaments. Summer sports would have just started practicing. Um, and then, of course, commencement. Uh, that's the, that is such a special time. I mean, that is a culminating experience of, you know, 13 years of, of a school experience for students. Uh, we'd also have our Senior Honors Night, where we honor all of our seniors who have earned scholarships or special designations. Uh, so there's just a lot going on during the month of May for, for our seniors and, and for all the kids, but particularly for the seniors. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. This is why they say May is like the new December. Yeah. Right? There's so much going on with graduations and confirmations. Mm-hmm. And you, you, you mentioned a lot of other things that I had kind of lost touch with since our kids are out of high school now. That sports and mm-hmm. AP tests and you know people transitioning out, saying goodbye to friends too, just the yeah. social aspects of it, right? Yeah. To be able to Absolutely. do that in person in the last few weeks of school, especially for the seniors. Mm-hmm. Um, what an abrupt ending to, mm-hmm. to their high school uh, lives in that season of their life. Yeah. But on mm-hmm. that note of graduations, the next question. Yeah, Dave, the next one is to you. What will graduation be like for Valley High School students this year? (laughs) Obviously different. Oh, yeah. So we want to make sure that we are honoring those kids because they deserve it. Um, You know, this is, like you said, Pastor Mike, you know, thinking that that March 12th was the last day that our seniors were in the building uh, is so unreal. So we want to make sure that we're going to honor them. We're going to put together uh, an in-person commencement. We're we're planning an in-person commencement as well as a virtual experience in case that in-person commencement just can't take place for whatever reason. Um, but right now we're looking at providing that experience for our families with respect to the social distancing piece, limiting the number of attendees that can uh, come with the graduates. Uh, but also we're putting together virtual commencement experience as well. So um, right now those are the two plans in pl- going on. Um, we distributed our caps and gowns on May 1st, had to be very uh, organized. We used the entire uh Valley High School campus, we have many parking lots, and we had different parts of the alphabet going through different parking lots to pick up those caps and gowns. So uh, we have a really good, strong plan in place. Um, One of my associate principals has been putting a lot of time and effort into making sure that we have a solid plan. So we're keeping our fingers crossed that we can celebrate our kids in person. We're, uh, I've been chatting with you about it just because you are a great leader, Dave, in this community, and I learn a lot from you, and that transfers over to the way we lead here sometimes, and hopefully mm-hmm. vice versa once in a while. But Absolutely. Uh, you, guys are, you, you guys are taking a difficult situation. I mean, we're entitling this episode of the podcast, When Life Gives You Lemons. Mm-hmm. You're really turning it into lemonade, and, and you're going to produce what I believe is going to be an incredibly memorable experience for the for those who can come, now it won't be as big of a crowd as it normally would be for commencement, I'm sure, um, you know, with all the grandparents and cousins and aunts and uncles and friends and all that, but but it will be what it'll be, and doing that online as well as in person, I think, is just, it's just brilliant, and uh, doing that safely. So you're not talking about packing a bunch of people into a tiny room, I know, because we've talked about this. What, 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 where can you go to spread out like that? So we are going to, uh, we'd like to use Valley Stadium. Um, we, we saw what the uh, Air Force Academy did. I believe it was the Air Force Academy. They had their graduates spaced out six feet apart from each other, and they used the entire field. Um, and we're b- planning on using both our home stands and the visitor stands so that we can try to respect the social distancing piece for our guests as well. And again, we're going to try to limit those to two uh, per graduate. 
Um, you know, but just trying to take into consideration parking um, and, and, and trying to control a large crowd at the same time of making sure that we are keeping social distancing and making sure that people stay safe. Um, you know, right, we're, we're, we're working through the plan right now, and uh, we actually have a meeting plan for Wednesday to um, answer some questions that the state has for us as well. Great. Mm-hmm. That's great. Next question, uh, Justin and Corey, will be to you. What will confirmation be like for Hope's eighth graders this year? Justin, why don't you start? Okay. Um, so we are um, we're disappointed that we couldn't just have a normal year. I just want to start there because I feel like uh, mm-hmm. it's so easy to move into what's the next plan. And I know as leaders, we're responsible to try to cast the vision of where we're going. But Corey and I have had a lot of conversations about it's just a bummer we couldn't have things the way we originally had hoped when the school year started. Um, but with all that in mind, um, we're going to have an online service, just like we had um, Easter celebrations where we wish we could have gotten together all together. Um, those were broadcast online, and it was still a moving and holy weekend. Um, we we want to do the same for our confirmation students. We don't want to just say we're not having anything. Um, and because we have so many students and families and our entire church congregation uh, to join, uh, there, it was difficult to try to figure out how we could do that in a large gathering um, during the season. So uh, we're moving online, but we're, we're working on a lot of creative ways that we can still acknowledge each student um, to make sure that they're seen um, and to also celebrate them the same way that they would get to be celebrated. Um, you know, there's nothing in the, the Bible that says, you know, in the spring of your eighth grade year, that's when you have to have confirmation. That's just a tradition that we have at Hope, and I think it's a really good tradition. Um, but there's also nothing that says when you confess your faith and you confirm your faith that it has to be done in some big, large gathering. It's fun when we can do that, uh, but we still know that God shows up wherever two or more are gathered. And so we're trusting Him as we move things online. Um, Corey's been working on those details. If you want to share some of the things too, Corey, that um, we're thinking with that and faith statements. Yeah. So for faith statement night, we are going to be doing a mega zoom call where we get all of our eighth grade leaders and our eighth grade students together. And we will start as one big, large group with a worship song and some announcements and introductions from Justin and I, and then we will push a button and then that will send everyone into their group rooms um, where those students get to sit with each other and um, give their faith statements around the zoom call. um, So they can still have that moment with their leaders and their group that they've been together for three years. Um, to to share their faith statements with each other. And then for confirmation, we are um, still going to have a confirmation Sunday. It'll be at the end of May this year, uh, but we will ha- uh, be able to celebrate these students in some new and unique ways and um, hopefully even get a parade going for them at the church uh, after uh, in the afternoon of confirmation Sunday. It's really interesting to me that both Valley High School and our confirmation ministry here at Hope are providing some options. So there's the online That'll, that'll be obviously a big part of it, the virtual commencement and virtual confirmation. I know I'm preaching that weekend into this theme, and I can't wait, because what you say to eighth graders, really everybody needs to hear. Uh, so it'll be for everybody, but specifically directed and unapologetically for eighth graders. But there's also going to be, like you said, Corey, hopefully an in-person part of that too, a, a confirmation parade, socially distanced, of course, and so, so that students and families can actually come out. And, you know, drive through the church parking lot and take part in some festivities that are going to be really special and memorable in a way that maybe their big brothers or sisters didn't get, uh, you know, just by doing it in a more routine way. So what we're trying to do is take these tough situations and find creative solutions that are going to make these things memorable because they're worthy of that graduation, confirmation, uh, other life events. We want to make these memorable. We want to make them something that God can use as holy moments that people say, yeah, I remember when that happened. It was a big deal for me. We're going to make it a big deal, both the online part of it and the in-person part of it. So stay tuned. Yeah. Hope. Uh, we will We will continue to give you more details as as the news develops too, because that has a lot to do with it as well, how far we can go uh, legally and also what's wise and safe. Yeah. Next question. Uh, in... 
in light of people having different feelings about a lot of these things, is how do you make tough decisions as leaders that affect so many people when there is no consensus? Wait, you mean not everybody agrees on everything everyone should do right now during this COVID-19 <laughs> crisis? I haven't noticed. Uh-huh. Wow. Okay. <laughs> who, who do you want to go first, Emily? Well, let's have Dave go first. Well, um, that's primary job number one is to try to get consensus. Um, but there's always a few guiding principles uh, that help me when I'm make, trying to make decisions, um, as well as district leadership. And that is, of course, what's best for students. Um, you know, when you can answer that question, specifically around safety pieces, mm-hmm. oftentimes it, uh, the answers emerge fairly easily. Um, so, you know, when you don't have consensus, you always have to go back to the question, what's best for kids? Um, and that often guides the decision making process. Mm hmm. Good answer. Yeah. How about how about you guys on the confirmation side, Corey? What 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 do you look at when you're trying to make these decisions? And Justin, what do you look at when you're making these decisions? And Emily, I'm going to add you in there too because I know you're a big part of these conversations. What do you three look at when you're trying to decide what's best for the church and what's best for these confirmants? Yeah, I'll let you guys start, Corey. Yeah, I would say first and foremost, sum- surround yourself with very smart people. <laughs> like uh, Emily, <laughs> she's the wonderful leader that we turn to oftentimes when when we have a tough decision on our hands. Um, but also, it's kind of like Dave said, it's important to be wise, take people's um, safety into the highest consideration, yeah. and then get really creative from there and try to listen to all sides and come up with a good solution that keeps people safe, but also makes people feel celebrated and um, worth um, the moment that they are celebrating. Yeah. Justin. Yeah. yeah I was just going to say, do whatever feels good. You know, whatever's easiest uh, for you. Um, <laughs> wait, um, uh-huh. no, it's, it's wow. Tempting that's, sometimes. that's some uh, kind of answer there. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it's tempting, uh, especially when you have to communicate how you came to your decision. So mm-hmm. as Corey mentioned, um, I find it's really helpful to ask a lot of questions uh, I like making lists of pros and cons. There's always an upside and a downside to any decision you make. And obviously, the really important ones have a lot of big upsides and downsides. And the only way you can add up those lists is to include a lot of voices. So mm-hmm. we have a student leadership team of eighth graders who we're in contact with every week. Uh, Dave's daughter, Natalie, was on that team last year um, as well. And so we get their direct input on things. We have close to 200 leaders, parents, adults who help lead these small groups. Uh, We couldn't do any of this without them. And so we get their insight, their feedback. Um, And not everybody agrees, uh, but we can navigate big decisions a whole lot better um, when we have that information. And I would say the last thing is not just what are we going to do when we make a decision, but why are we doing it? I think Mm -hmm. people can disagree with what you're doing, but if they understand why you're doing what you're doing and the heart behind it, it's a whole lot easier to try to uh, communicate what's going on. Mm-hmm. Emily, what do you, you're, you're a part of those conversations and decisions. You have to make a lot of tough decisions uh, mm-hmm. along the way because people are involved and in, no matter what we do, Dave, I love the way you started your answer to say, well, job number one is to try to build that consensus. Yeah. But sometimes you get into public issues yeah. where consensus just isn't going to happen mm-hmm. because people feel very passionately and on this COVID-19 issue of when should things reopen and when, th- mm-hmm. when should things come back into full swing, you've got the whole gamut. Yeah. So let's, let's use this as the transition into our deeper dive. And I want to start with a question to you, Emily. Mm-hmm. Uh, if we have on one side people saying, oh, this is really just a big nothing, uh, just to take it to an extreme, right? That, that, or it's a conspiracy or there's really no virus. Over to the other extreme, which is uh, nobody should ever... Uh, move outside of their own bedroom mm-hmm. for the next 12 years. Uh, and and that's, that's final answer. Okay, so extremes and everything in between. Yeah. But those folks are a part of our church family and are part of the Valley High School family mm-hmm. community too. And so as a leader, mm-hmm. how do you navigate that? How do you, how do you sort through all that? We've had some really good uh, responses already from Dave and Corey and Justin, but what would you add to that? What are, what are some of the things? Because you, I think as much as anybody on this, on the, in this whole church, you're facing tough decisions like this on a weekly basis. I mean, stuff pops up, there's kids involved. Yeah. I, you know, I do think Ethan family has had a lot of those decisions. And what I, 
really lean on is what Dave said. I, I say during these times where we're debating what to do, it is hard for someone to argue making a call for safety. Mm. And as a leader, I'm not, I'm not going to risk someone's safety. It's one thing for me to risk some, some other piece of a celebration or component of, of an event or something, but we're just not going to play with safety. We, we have that as a top value for good reason. Yeah, we always have. The reason this time, I think, is so challenging is there's just different opinions, even on what's safe and what's not. And I, I think the next thing that's really important to acknowledge is as leaders, and I've heard these three say it, we are just, if not more, disappointed that these things can't happen in person as a lot mm-hmm. of these families. Yeah. And uh, when you're having uh, these events where parents are involved and families are involved and people who love students and just want them to be able to have a celebration, they have strong feelings about that. It's really a whole lot like Major League Baseball players right now say, we're, there's nothing we'd rather do right now yeah. than play these games. You yeah. know, it's, it's a highlight for us. It's what we, what we live for. Mm-hmm. For us as a church, we live for Confirmation Sundays yeah. Yeah. And, and celebrating graduations within our church family and mm-hmm. being a part of this community and supporting the amazing schools we have in this, in this whole Des Moines metro area, yeah. public and private. We, we're for all of it, right? We, we, we want to celebrate those things. We want to do life to, mm-hmm. to the full, mm-hmm. this side of heaven. And when we can, it's, I think that's so true. We're, we're as disappointed yeah. as anybody because these are highlights – for us. Yeah. So safety is of utmost importance. Yeah. And then on the other side of that, we want to balance that out with uh, also not being scared and, and not letting yeah. fear rule these things because the Bible has a lot to say about not being afraid too, right? Yep, absolutely. We don't want to do that. We we also have uh, the utmost respect for what authorities are telling us to do. And so I right. hear Dave saying the same. We're just not going to go against uh, what CDC regulations are right now or recommendations. Uh, we have to weigh those risks and take take those really seriously, but do it in a way that isn't fear-based, but is is respecting those guidelines. Yeah, that's well said. I want to ask the three of you to let, let's broaden this conversation, this deeper dive out, just w- one more level, and then we'll have to land this plane. What would you say, I, I don't know about you, but when the new year rolled around, I wasn't thinking, oh, COVID-19 is a thing. <laughs> and, and that's going to that's gonna completely change. So, you know, when we set our plans for this year, we set plans to do confirmation. We set plans to have a closing for Hope Kids and doing summer stuff and, and VBS. And we'll, we'll talk about that, too, in the very near future, about what we're going to do there uh, that, that is also safe but also an exceptional experience. When we, when we got to the new year of 2020 and we're making plans for the year ahead, none of us thought, I'm sure you didn't either, Dave, at Valley High School, well... <laughs> We're going to cancel school sometime around March, uh, send students home, do everything online, or we're going to can- cancel Power Life Confirmation uh, classes every Wednesday night here at Hope, move everything online. We're going to cancel worship. Uh, we didn't cancel it. We moved it online. Mm-hmm. We're going to move everything online. None of us would have thought that. In retrospect, and I, I want our listeners to think about this too. What would you say, what advice would you give to your January 2020 self about the future? In other words, what have we learned mm. uh, through this season of uncertainty? What, what would you say to that person? Now, here's what's going to happen and here's how you handle it. Dave, what would you say? <laughs> Pastor Mike, that is a tough, tough question. <laughs> That's why I ask. Um, I know, and... <laughs> And as I've been sitting here thinking about, you know, what would I have done differently? You know, none of us knows what the future holds. Um, And I think that's what makes this whole um, situation so unnerving is we just don't know what the future holds. So back in uh, January, thinking what's happening now, if I knew what was happening, um, you know, I, I... I've just been so impressed with how, as a school district, um, our our district leaders responded to this pandemic. Um, You know, we uh, incorporated a new um, uh, uh, learning platform where we were able to do some distance learnings called Canvas. That allowed us to be able to provide online learning fairly immediately Mm. um, once we realized what we were facing 
So, you know, I would just say possibly um, equipping teachers um, with uh, the tools to really provide that online learning and also making sure that all of our students had access to, uh, to, to the internet, to online learning, making sure that nobody is, you know, feeling like they can't participate or engage in the learning. Mm -hmm. That would probably be what I would do is just make sure that all of our families had access to be able to participate in online learning. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Justin, what would you say to yourself? And Corey, what would you say to yourself? What advice would you give um, about what was to be, no, knowing what has become of this COVID-19 crisis? Corey, what would you, what would you say? Well, first of all, like going back into my t January of 2020 self, one thing I would have loved to do um, is to really take a really deep dive into looking at what makes Power Life so special. Like what what's at the core of what we do? Yes. It's that that faith, that heart, that love, that connection, um, that um, just that very essence, that courage and bravery of just like showing up and building relationships with your groups, and also um, really talking about faith together as what it means to. Um, to learn and develop faith as a middle school student and really just look at those things that make power life so good and um, and plan a smoother transition even to how we can continue to do that into the summer into the um, into the fall or into now when we are moving online because I get um, one of my favorite parts of my job that I get to do every year is to read these eighth grade faith student um, statements and to really like just see what they all write and how they put their own faith into their own words. And uh, one, I've seen three things that are pretty common in every student's faith statement. And it's like the three influential things of their faith has been meeting every night, um, every Wednesday night with their group in Power Life and attending these uh, fun summer camps around our community that really help them invest in their faith and also being a junior shepherd at VBS. And mm -hmm. all of those things look very different different now, um, especially going into the summer and, and immediately. So I'd really, um, it's really interesting to see now that those things have changed. Uh, what makes, how can we help students continue to develop their faith in a brand new way and still be like very strong and running towards Jesus as fast as they can. Mm. I love it. Thank you, Corey. Yeah. Great, great response. Justin, anything else? Yeah, I would just say, um, it sounds strange, but as I've been thinking about this, I would say, don't worry about the future. And it's so bizarre because I feel like there's a lot of things to be worried about right now. But the things that I could have possibly been worried about in January <laughs> have totally changed. Like mm -hmm. I, those things don't even things to worry yeah, about because right. it's so different. Yeah. So right. I, I think I would say, you know, don't worry about what's ahead. Um, obviously, there's scripture that tells us that too. Jesus tells us not to worry about tomorrow. Um, but I think that's a good lesson for us today too um, is because who knows what's in the future. So I would, I would say don't worry about tomorrow. Mm. Well said. Emily, what would you put on there? You know, I have thought about this, and I think that I, in January or now, would really put a focus on being thankful for what I do have. And I think that's one thing to look back and say, well, I, I didn't even know I should be so thankful for gathering together for worship and things like that. But really in this state now, hmm. I have found I could, I could think all the time about how we don't get to be together for with graduates at parties or with confirmation, but I'm, I'm much better off if I'm thankful for what we do have. Like I'm thankful for my health. I'm thankful for the extra time with my family. I'm thankful for technology in a way that I've never felt uh, that strongly for just the ability to do this, to see their faces on a screen, but still be doing it in a healthy way. And so whether it was then or now or in the future, because I can't worry about it, if I can focus on what I do have, I'm much better off. You know, I was I, I was saying it almost with tongue in cheek earlier that that it's you asked how I'm doing at the very mm -hmm. beginning of this episode, and I said, well, honestly, this I'm getting tired of this, yeah. and and I think a lot of us are getting weary. The world is weary. Mm -hmm. uh, we're tired of the of the old or uh, of the abnormal routine we're in, mm -hmm. but. Between what you just said, between what all all four of you said, uh, as we go around the horn here, what really strikes me is how good it is for us just to connect like this. Yeah. E even though even though it's virtually for the three of you, people we usually see in person around here, mm -hmm. um, and connect with you as a sister in Christ, Emily, and the new Pew Studio crew over there who yeah. are the hidden force behind this podcast. Yeah. 
um, that we're wired up with a need to do that. Mm -hmm. We need that connection. We need that community. We need God, Mm -hmm. God put that in us and, and, and we Mm -hmm. need that. And so I think that's a big part of what I would say too, is that I, it's my mic drop moment. So I'll start that part of the, uh, of the closing of this episode with that is that, uh, Emily, what you just said there, to be appreciative of what was. If I could go tell my January 2020 self, say, hey, we, when you and your wife go out on a date to a restaurant, soak it up because you're not going to do that for a while. Yeah. You know, you're, you're, you're not going to, if you just go hold, it, hold hands on the way out of a movie, mm-hmm. so, soak that moment up because mm-hmm. you're taking that for granted. Um, being able to sit in the front row at worship mm-hmm. where we always sit over in the corner, you know, for, for our weekend services soak this up and look around the room and look at everybody's faces and, and take that moment in because as routine as it is, as, as much as it's a part of your weekly, you see it every week, mm-hmm. it's holy. It's, yeah. it's really significantly special and it is a God-blessed gift. Don't miss it. T- take it in. Corey, you said something else. It's part of my mic drop moment too. And I'll be very brief because we, we need to get around to everybody here. But you said it's really important to know what confirmation is, what power life confirmation is, to say, what, what really is this all about? Can we hold on to those things mm-hmm. if we can't physically have that community and those connections and look each other face to face in person in the same rooms, which is a huge loss? Let's at least bring up the things that we can. So confirmation is about this connection you make with God and you make it in these different places. You make it at church and you make it at your Wednesday night power life uh, classes and groups and when you go on these retreats and when you serve and volunteer at VBS or, or wherever it is that you're a part of church life, those, those things we can continue to do, even though we can't do them like we did them in this season for a while, we're going to get back to that. I can't wait. Yeah. But until then, we're going we're gonna to just pour everything we've got into saying there's still a God. This God still loves you. This God is still with you. It's going to be okay. The same God who loves you and is with you promises the hope of a future where we are going to get back. COVID-19 will not last forever. Mm-hmm. It, just, it just won't. Uh, this season where we're isolated won't last forever. So remembering what really matters, uh, what, what confirmation is, appreciating the things that, that we've got, I hope we really appreciate them when we get back. Yeah. I, I think we will for a while. Yeah. I just hope that we hold on. I think I hope that everybody in this culture that's gone through this season will look back on this and say, I'm never going back to taking things like that mm-hmm. for granted again. Mm-hmm. I will appreciate these moments, and I'm not going to lose them mm-hmm. again. Uh, mic drop moments. What else did you learn in this conversation from each other, Emily? Yeah. Uh, you know, I think one of the things is just listening to you guys, uh, you three as leaders. It's important to recognize Everyone noted if they could go back to January, they would do more to just prepare for other people to have help in bigger ways. And so I think as we talk about leaders who make tough decisions, I hear all of you and I think you represent a bunch of leaders, I'm sure, who if they could go back, they would prepare in such bigger ways because their heart is to help. Uh, And so as there are frustrations with calls being made one way or the other, it's important to look at the heart of the leader. And you guys, I think, showed that here. Big amen. And a hallelujah, too. Justin, mic drop moment for you in this conversation. Yeah, it was something that Emily just had said about um, not taking for granted uh, the moments that you're in. And I think for me, that includes right here and right now. Uh, to not just wish away this season, right. but we're we're trapped in our house. Trapped. Uh, we're here, <laughs> and it's loud. It's loud. Yeah. Um, my wife and and our three kids, and we all take turns laughing and crying. And so it's tempting to want to just get back to whatever this new reality is going to be. Yep. But also to soak up these moments that we have um, for what they are. Mm-hmm. So true, Corey. How about you? Your mic drop moment today. Yeah, I loved, um, well, this whole conversation, this whole thing has been a really big highlight for me, but also um, I loved hearing Dave's plans for Valley High School and as well as hearing everyone's take on our plans for these students coming up here. Mm -hmm. I think it's, um, and something you said too, Mike, is creating a a moment worthy of of them and what they've accomplished and what they've been through. I just, um, I love 
uh, that brainstorming of how to make something bigger and better and um, just important for these students really create a memory. So then when these students, these seniors or these eighth graders become parents and grandparents themselves, they have a story to tell like, well, when I was confirmed or when I was graduation, like we were in the middle of COVID-19 and this is what this looked like. I want to, uh, it's cool to be a part of making that memory for um, all these students. Mm -hmm. Really well said. Dave Maxwell, mic drop moment. Um, two things. First of all, is just how similar the challenges are that, that we're experiencing. Um, you know, I, I never really took into consideration how you would move uh, reading your face statements online and, and what kind of challenges that, that, that uh, creates. But at the same time, how creative it allows us to be to meet mm-hmm. those challenges. Um, because, you know, before um, I never really zoomed maybe once or twice before, but now every single day, mm-hmm. you know, I'm in a Zoom meeting or a Google Hangout meeting. Um, and again, just trying to see what the problem is and the challenge which is in front of us and how we can meet that challenge. Um, I think that's what I'm hearing, uh, what Corey and Justin and everyone has been trying to do is, is see what the problem is and see the challenge and then try to meet that challenge. Brilliant. Thank you, David. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Emily. As yeah. always, um, lots of lots of good stuff here today. Lots of nuggets, you mm-hmm. know, gold nuggets coming out of the conversation. Thanks for your faithfulness. Thanks for your leadership. Mm-hmm. Thanks for what you guys do. Um, thanks for having cool red headphones, Justin. That's we we all we all look at those and we go, man, we should have got red ones. I know. You know those are awesome. Yeah. Those are awesome. Mm-hmm. I just absolutely. Yeah. They're, they're, thanks. They're, <laughs> they're, they're Chicago Bulls red, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I just think I threw that at him. Like, he's mm-hmm. looking at me like, no, they're not. But I'll just go ahead and humor you. <laughs> Thank you, too. Thanks for uh, tuning in to, uh, to uh, this podcast and to the conversation that we got to have. And thanks for sitting in with us, uh, as always. Thanks to the new Pew studio crew, Chris New and Brendan Pugh. Um, and we will see you again next time. We can't wait for that as well. These are holy moments, uh, as Justin said so well there toward the end. It's important to uh, appreciate what we've got right now, too, in this moment. So try to do that today. Uh, God bless you, and uh, we are praying for you. Let's, let's wrap up with a quick prayer. Gracious Lord God, we praise and thank you for who you are, for being a God who breaks through in uh, times that are more routine and times that are completely abnormal. God bless uh, the West Des Moines Community Schools, Valley High School, leaders like Dave. Bless uh, confirmation ministries all over the world, including the one here at Hope, led by Justin and Corey and Emily. God, we pray for your blessing on everybody who's tuning in and listening. Uh, Watch over us, God. Keep us safe. Heal this world. Turn it right side up. And along the way, God, help us to see the holy moments that you give to us in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. We'll see you next time. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in today to the Pastor Mike Drop podcast. We would invite you on whatever app you are on to rate and review us to help get the word out. And in the meantime, if you can join us for worship, we would love to have you. We'll see you there. I'm the typical.